I'm Subodh Agrawal, and today we're going to talk about remote therapeutic monitoring, a new offering from CMS. For those of people who don't know me, I'm a cardiologist, practicing cardiology, actively practicing cardiology in Athens, Georgia since 1995. Uh, I also chair a doctor's ACO, it's an independent physician group, which manage medical patients. And uh, we get rewarded to, by improving the health of our patient at the lower cost. So money we save, part of the money comes to us. That's the best way to create revenue while doing the good thing for the patient. So today we're gonna to talk about remote therapeutic monitoring and, uh, and CMS started this program this month. They went to research, look for the causes, cost of the healthcare and we basically has major problem. Our cost of healthcare continue grow. Okay, can, uh, so we basically think about in 2020, two, 2020 the US, US spend, spend $4.1 trillion and 90% of that money was spent on patients with chronic diseases and mental health conditions. So preventing chronic diseases or managing symptoms when prevention is not possible can reduce these costs. Based on this theory, the CMS brought this idea of remote therapeutic monitoring. And CMS has been doing things like that, chronic care management, principal care management, and remote therapeutic monitoring for the last few years with the goal with the goal of connecting provider with the patient. CMS feel like by connecting provider with the patients, the patient can be treated early, then can at the right time and may, may reduce their admission to the hospital, may reduce the ER visit, may reduce the expense of of treating disease later. So in this slide, summarize how these program or remote therapeutic monitoring will connect provider with the patient. For provider a definition for CMS in for remote therapeutic monitor is defined as any physician, any nurse practitioner, any, any physician assistant or any qualified healthcare provider who has NPI number, who are registered, who can provide service, such, such as physical therapist, dietitian, social worker. Those people can provide services to the, to the patient. The idea, the idea is the CMS has expanded the definition of provider and give tool to these providers to use remote therapeutic monitoring to bring themselves close to the patient. So the provider provide devices which collect physiological and non-physiological data from the patients. The provider see those data through the gateway devices and change treatment based on the alert or based on behavior of the patient. Now the question is, does this way of treating patient or bringing patient closer to the uh, physician or connecting provider with the physician, does it save money? Multiple study has shown in private as well as in governments that this work, it improved the quality of care, it helped um, reduce the cost. And recently, the one study sh showed that by bringing patient close to the provider, it avoid urgent care and emergency room visits, it may avoid many hospitalization, improve compliance of the patient with medication. Compliance is also a problem and it costs significant amount of money uh, as a waste of medical care due to non-compliance. It can detect non-compliance early and then the provider can act on it. It can detect effect, efficacy of the treatment earlier and detect side effect of the treatment earlier. So what is the evidence that this kind of therapy work? So this is a, a randomized 
controlled trial of 552 patients with uncontrolled hypertension was managed in one section using online management of blood pressure. Blood pressure measured by the patients. They follow the protocol given by the provider compared to the usual care. Within 12 months, they saw a significant difference in, in improving the quality of blood pressure control. And with that, it also significantly reduced the cost of care. So according to this study, one millimeter decrease in blood pressure saved $15 in healthcare. So just imagine, we have like 60 million Americans who has hypertension. And if we use similar kind of a program for them, we can control blood pressure better and, and uh, hopefully can reduce the care cost. So how to perform remote, remote therapy monitoring. monitoring? Now, CMS tell you how to do it, but they do it in a, they do it in a, in a, in a they publish everything in the federal register. And to, for a physician to see what CMS want us to do, you have to come to this federal register. So this federal register published in November, it contained 2,414. It is basically a new fee schedule publication. And you have to find the remote therapeutic monitoring guidance in this paper. So I found the quicker way to find out. So you, this publication, publication available, available in internet, you just type federal register 2022 and remote therapeutic monitoring, and you get this. Once you have that, then click Control F and type remote therapeutic monitoring. It will take you to page 351. And next 10 page, we just summarize the code, the requirements, how CMS wants provided to provide remote therapeutic monitoring. So who can order and build, and build remote, remote therapeutic, therapeutic monitoring. monitoring? So I just said the, the, the field is expanded to include qualified healthcare providers and hoping that the relationship with these provider with the, pa with the patient, the remote therapeutic monitoring bring them closer and provide better care. So let's, let's talk about this. What, is, what are non-physiological data? So remote therapeutic monitoring is, is basically checking on patients, what you do in your office. When patient comes in, you're taking medicine, you're taking your medicine, how's your blood pressure? How are you feeling? Those questions you ask in your office are the questions defined as a non-physiological data. Well, uh, how is how the pain? Is the pain? Medication, medication working? working. Are, you, are you taking medication? medication? How much exercise are you doing? And any, 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 any question, question can, be, can be designed by provider depending upon the, the disease they are treating. At present time, CMS has only put out two disease system, a respiratory system as well as musculoskeletal system. So any disease related to this a uh, two system qualified to perform, to perform remote, remote therapy, therapy monitoring. monitoring. So how do you collect the non-physiological data? Does remote therapeutic monitoring require the use of medical device? The answer is yes. And I will describe you the devices like Fitbit and Apple watches are not medical devices. They they are wellness devices and CMS do not recognize them as a medical device. So how do you define a medical device? So CMS put that burden to the FDA and the FDA basically go to this group called International Medical Device Regulation Forum, which define, which define a software as a medical device. So, Recently, the software which can, which be, can be downloaded in a smartphone, smartphone or software which can be downloaded in PC can perform certain function. And we're able to do that, then it meets the, meet the definition 
of medical device. Medical. Now, if you send that device to FDA and say, listen, can you tell us this, is, this meets the definition, you will not get the answer for it. So we have to come to this paper, read the paper, and see that your device or somebody who's providing the software meet the criteria. So what this device should meet the criteria described here, it should able to diagnose or screen or monitor patient symptoms related to the disease process and able to communicate uh, to the provider, able to create alert, able, um, able to uh, document progress, all those features has to be in the software to make it a software application for medical device. So how do we collect non-physiological data? Non-physiological non data, data are collected, collected either, either, either by, by the, the software, software, as I discussed earlier, or a patient can answer the auto call and auto call can accept the answer and then get directly into the software application medical device or patient can use a pulse oximetry and read the number and then add into the application or standalone peripheral device such as cardio mobile EKG monitor. They can do the EKG and then mail it to their provider. The merely wellness devices like Fitbit and Apple Watch is not considered as, as medical devices. To contrast to this, the non-physiological data, the physiological data as defined in a remote patient monitoring mm -hmm. need to be collected digitally, automatically, and transmitted directly to the physician software without any intervention from the patient. So remember that the remote patient monitoring is a totally different thing than remote therapeutic monitoring. And the data collection is different. So non-physiological data is really how your patient doing. Those are the questions you create and then you see those answers and then modify your treatment. So this is the example given in the federal register how CMS think that remote therapeutic um, monitoring will potentially be used in general public. So I'll read so that, I'll read for, that you. for you. A asthmatic, asthmatic patient, patient is prescribed, prescribed a rescue, rescue needler, needler, needler with, with FDA approved, approved medical, medical, medical device, device that, that monitors, monitors when the patient, when the patient uses, uses the inhaler. inhaler. How many times during the day the patient uses the inhaler? How many puff or doses the patient uses each day? The pollen count, the environmental factor that exists in the patient location at that time. So this can be collected by the device itself and patient can answer those questions in the software, enter the data, and that data can be given, can be sent to the provider. This is non-physiological data. The data is then used by a treating practitioner to assess the patient therapeutic response and adherence to the estimate treatment plan. This can enable the practitioner to better determine how well the patient is responding to particular medication, what social or environmental factors affect the patient respiratory system status, and what change could be made to improve patient health. So this is the CMS explanation in the federal register. So basically, my suggestion, what, they, what we try, they're trying, this remote therapeutic mm -hmm. monitoring trying to do is to bring provider closure to the patient on daily basis and able to monitor patient answers and able to modify treatment according to that. So I wanna give you example. Now I'm gonna start doing this in my practice. And, and this is the my, my thoughts are, uh, and, and we will welcome you, any questions from, from you. So go ahead and, and raise the question and we'll take time to uh, explain all these questions. So for example, number one, a 70 year old lady with COPD with exercise induced hypoxia undergoing pulmonary rehabilitation. She usually visit local ER once in two weeks due to non-compliance of medication and get hospitalized at least four times a year, each hospitalization lasting for four to seven days. The physical therapist who performing the pulmonary rehabilitation 
decide to do remote therapeutic monitoring with goal of improving function, increase compliance, reduce ER visit and hospitalization. So that's, that's her decision or his decision. So now they, then they create a care plan. This is what we're gonna do. Based on their care, care plan, the, the provider create non-physiological data, which can be, and, and can be inserted into software application medical device and provide that pulse oximetry. These questions are, could be, or could modify the way you want it. How are you feeling on the scale of one to 10, one being worse, 10 feeling great. And if the patient, patient answer, answer five, five, that create that automatically, automatically a, a, a alert. alert to the provider. And that, and th that means the provider know the patient not doing well. Uh, now, did you miss any of your medication yesterday? Yes or no? Yes, create alert. Did you do your prescribed physical exercise yesterday? Yes or no? No, create alert. Are you getting more short of breath than usual? Yes or no? Yes, create alert. What is your pulse oximetry at rest without oxygen today? I mean, this is a patient is only hypoxia during exercise. So patient should be a, uh, should have a good oxygenation at, at rest without exercise. So if the oxygenation is less than 88%, that create alert. And what is your pulse oximetry after prescribed exercise with prescribed oxygen today? Less than 80, 88% create alert. So these questions are available to the patient in their smartphone using the software application medical device. And that device is given to the patient by the provider. Now, so what happened after that? The patient gave informed, informed consent, consent, has a smartphone. The provider download a specific software application medical device and as questionnaire to this device, register the patient, educate and train the patient to answer the question to the best of their ability on daily basis. The provider then monitor patient's response to those questions on a software platform in the office or home on daily basis, follow the care plan and document response to alert. The provider alter the care plan based on the patient response to question and alert. The provider have at least one interactive communication with patient or caregiver in a calendar month to qualify to bill CPD code 98980 and multiple of CPD code 98981 for each additional 20 minutes. The mm -hmm. device collect all these events, document time spent on review of the patient data, create 30 days report for the provider to sign and bill. So if you have a patient like that, the, how are you gonna bill? So this is the way we're gonna bill. We're gonna, ICD-10 ICD should be part of the respiratory system. So they are J44.9, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, chronic respiratory failure with hypoxia. Then if you have that, then you only bill 98975 only once at the start of the remote therapeutic monitoring, which can last for one month, can last for six months, and can last for five years. So only once during one episode, when another episode is started by somebody other physician, then they can build that again. So once for per episode, and Medicare is paying, will pay about $19 for that, plus minus $2, depending upon which area you live in. Then CPD code 98976 for the software application medical device and pulse oximetry uh, meter provided. So the provider will buy that and then provide that to the patient at, at no cost to the patient and bill every 30 days for the duration of RTM. So if patient require remote therapeutic monitor for three months, it will be three times, it will be six months and six times. The CPD code 98980 for first 20 minutes with at least one interactive communication with the patient and $48 plus minus $5, depending upon where you live. And for, and for additional, additional every 20, 20 minutes, minutes um, um, they will pay you $39. Pay you $39.
So the provider bill their NPI, use their NPI to Medicare without supervision from the physician. So that's a major difference in the remote therapeutic monitoring that the physical therapist can decide, do all these things, stay close to the patient and make the patient compliant with medication, detect early non-compliant non and, and intervene. This is one example. So second example I'll give you is the muscular skeletal system. There are, so a 65 year old, Mr. Smith is undergoing physical therapy after total right knee depression. He also suffered from chronic lumbar back pain due to spondylolisthesis and has on chronic narcotic medication. He has been non-compliant with his physical therapy due to poor pain control. His daily activity are limited due to chronic pain. The physical therapist decide to start RTM with the goal of improving compliance and improving function. So it's the physical therapist, not the physician, who decide that this patient will undergo remote therapeutic monitoring. So similarly, how they do it. So the physical therapist decide to collect following non-physiological data. How are you feeling on a scale of bad, normal, good, or great? The bad will create alert. Did you miss any of your medication yesterday? Yes or no? The yes will create alert. Did you do any prescribed physical exercise yesterday? Yes or no? No will create alert. The without, how's your pain without your medication? If the pain is the one being no pain, 10 being the worst, any number of seven or greater will create alert. And what was your pain with your current medication on the scale of one to 10? Any, any, any number like five or more will create alert. And these numbers can be adjusted depending upon the, the provider. Provider control all these questions. So what happened that then the, the, the patient give informed consent has a smartphone, the provider download a specific software application, medical device, add question near to the, this device, Register the patient, educate and train the patient to answer the question to best your their ability on daily basis. The provider mm -hmm. then monitor patient respond to those questions on a software platform in office or home or on daily basis, follow the care plan and, it, uh, and, and document response to alert. The provider after the care plan based on patient response to question, alter uh, and alert, change the plan. The provider have at least one interactive communication with the patient or caregiver in a calendar month to qualify to build 98980 and, and multiple of CPT of 98981 for each additional 20 minutes. The device collect all the events, document time is spent on the review of the patient data and create a 30 days report to the provider to sign and bill. So in this patient, how are we gonna bill? So the diagnosis has to be related to musculoskeletal system. So presence of right artificial knee joint is the G code, um, chronic pain syndrome, spondylosis with radiculopathy or lumbosacral region and long-term use of opiate analgesic. With this ICD-10 code, the CPT the code, has code has described, described there, there 989755 at the start, start of the RTM. RTM. 98977 for the device for the musculoskeletal system and CPD code 98980 for first 20 minutes and multiple of, of 98981 for two, 20 minutes or more and provide a bill with their NPI to Medicare without supervision from the physician. So it is an incredible way of connecting the provider with the patient who really involved in the care. And I hope the Medicare will successfully be able to do it. They have, um, we are gonna start doing it, see how that, uh, how that goes. And we are gonna learn um, from our experience and we will welcome your input. If you know more about this, then let, let's share that and move forward. My goal is that this is a good, good, um, way of bringing patient closer to your practice. So digital medicine is here to come and, if we, and, and how 
Health Not Safe can assist a remote therapeutic provider. We can educate and develop the process, develop questionnaires to collect non-physiological data for the specific disease process, provide the software application, medical device which meet FDA definition, provide software platform and call center support, provide reporting, provide billing and help in CMS auditing. We can do all that for you if you want us to help you. So if you decide, hey, oh, this is too much work for me, and if you, I don't want to get, I'm just comfortable the way we are, then you know what's going to happen? You're going to start losing patient to teledoc, start losing patient to middle clinic, you start losing patient to other clinic who provide both digital and in-person uh, um, visits, losing opportunity to become low cost, high quality provider and lose more than $500 per patient per year revenue after expenses. So the choice is yours. I think um, time is going to continue, move forward. The digital health is here, which is gonna connect your patient with you and if you and don't, if you change, don't change, um, with time, the time are going to change you. So we'll take, um, these are the reference, usually came from the internet. Uh, the top reference is the Federal Register. And there is a, there is a summary, oh, that what happened. Once the register comes in, multiple low, healthcare lawyer, multiple healthcare consultant, read all those things and then publish their blog and, um, things which are available on internet, just type remote therapeutic monitoring, CMS and 2022. You're gonna to have tons of like almost 20, 30 articles, which were just telling you what is written in the register. I, I suggest, suggest that you go, that you to, go register to register itself, because, because then, then you know, you what, know what, what you need to do because all other blog can put extra thing on it. The last, and then the article from BMJ, is there and there is another uh, review from the another lawyer. So it's all available available to you. You just need a desire to learn and do it. So, so question, I think you're gonna have plenty of questions. We're gonna take all your questions depending upon time. No question. No question, okay, very good. And so what I'm gonna tell you that if you have question, you come to you later on, you can send it to info at healthwellsafe.com. And uh, we would really love to have you comment on our presentation or any question on a social media network at healthwealthsafe.com. So we, why don't we open up for question? Just people can call in and, and we can answer the question. Is anybody planning? Let's see, well, let me ask you a question if you don't ask me a question. Is anybody in the audience, or oh, we have almost 120 people, Anybody in the audience uh, planning to start remote therapeutic monitoring for their patient? Fiji, Kathy Moore to everybody. How do you, you oh, how did we ask question? Kathy Moore is asking question, but she doesn't know how to answer the question. So what you do is you go to chat and, uh, and write, the, uh, write the question in the chat. Oh, we have 20, 20 chat. All right, we have a question from Santosh Pep. Okay, what is the question? Is only Medicare paying for these services? Good question. Basically, this program started in January 2022, and we know Medicare paying for it, and I think the other will follow depending upon the outcome. So right now, the Medicare patient and Medicare replacement patient uh, will qualify for this service. So out of those 120 people watching this uh, program, which is, I'm thrilled that you all attended this meeting. The anybody, the anybody planning, planning or, or want, to, want start to start doing the therapeutic, therapeutic monitoring, monitoring, monitoring for their patient, or is too new to, to start? So this is webinar, they, they cannot come in conversations, right? Why don't we open up so everybody can talk? Okay, we had uh, Abid Bashir, Okay. Okay. So, so bro, bro. Yes, so yes. I think, I think this is a to engage with our patient, Kathy. My. Okay. So Santosh Pan say, can patient register with RPM and get RTM service together? Uh, in the federal register, is it not said that you, they cannot have both. 
uh, is not clear. So if, if you a patient getting RPM, they are physiological data, and then you add non-physiological data, I think you got to know more patient, more of the patient, you'll do better care for patient. So at this point, unless, unless CMS, CMS say, say cannot, cannot do it, do it I, would I would recommend that, that for, go, go forward, forward and, and get to, get know, to the know the patient, and, and treat patient, patient with RPM. With RPM. RPM. Hey, uh, can you hear me? Bashir raised his hand to ask a uh, question. And Dr. Bashir, I, we just uh, go ahead and see if we can. Hey, thank you, Sabata. It's a, it's a wonderful program, and we enjoyed your talk. And uh, we'll look into, I, mean, I guess, uh, being a subspecialist, I will be interested to learn whether there will be additional services will be added in future, like a monitoring of patient for hypertension and providing therapeutic management of hypertension for the, my patients. So I, at this time, you told me that it's not included yet. Hypertension and, uh, for remote therapeutic monitoring not included, but for hypertension, the best approach right now is remote, um, remote patient monitoring, where the patient get blood pressure monitor and the data is straightway come to your office and you can develop a protocol and patient can follow that. So if, and, you, if, if you're treating hypertension, this is an opportunity to become your clinic, become a hybrid clinic. It's see patient in person, as well as patient is followed digitally using remote patient monitoring, not remote therapeutic monitoring. And the same softwares are available to do remote monitoring uh, where uh, like FDA approved devices, like a software can be downloaded in patient uh, smartphones. Very good. So no, the, for remote patient monitoring, the device collects physiological data and CMS mandate from after the end of this emergency from, from January 16, that the device need to collect the data, take the blood pressure, and then send the data straight to your office without any interference from the patient. So, and most of the device we have, have those, those, that capability. They have cell phone in the system, they take the blood pressure and the blood pressure reading come in within about a minute to your office. So if you're monitoring blood pressure and you can double up a protocol and you can manage your blood pressure better than anything else. One last question. I know I'm taking a little time. There is an interface developed with the current EHR system, like your system or my system. I'm using Epic. There is interface developed at this time or it can be developed in the future to get all the information transferred back to your EHR system to make it one platform? I think in the modern world, everything is possible. So right now what Epic will tell you that well, we need money to create an interface. And right. so, if but if Epic is ready to do it, then the interface is possible. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. So Lauren Reinhardt, how will the billing work? Will be doing billing for provider like the, our RPM service. So Lauren is our salesperson in Hawaii and she's asking question, I will, this, this, for RPM, currently we will do the, we'll do the same thing what we're doing for RPM. And if they, if anybody wanna do our RTM on themselves, we let them do it. We believe that billing is very important. And if you don't do it right way, then you will not able to collect money. So if we, for our, our practices, we'll do the billing for them. Okay, can patient registered with RPM get RTM service together? I answer that. Okay, will RTM work with only physical therapists or also occupational respiratory branches of therapists too? Answer is yes. The, any, any, qualified healthcare worker who has NPI, who is licensed to do medicine and, and able to build Medicare can do respiratory system as musculoskeletal system. So sorry, like dietitian um, treating obesity, which is causing musculoskeletal pain and, and, and patient is undergoing um, dietary treatment that dietitian can decide, listen, I want to do RTM and they, they can do this and they can uh, build uh, Medicare. They have to follow same thing what I mentioned to you, D develop a plan, develop the plan, develop the questionnaire, get the software application, a medical device, and then follow patients 
uh, answers and uh, develop the plan. Well, looks like do we have some more. I think there is. So thank you, thank you, our team here, Chesco, and Dylan, and Daryl, who put this thing all thing together, and uh, Judah. Judah is uh, in San Diego, um, watching and helping us from there. Kyle, we have a question from Kyle. What makes patient eligible for RTM? Well, the patient first need to have Medicare or Medicare um, replacement plan as insurance. Second, they need to have a disease system related to musculoskeletal system or respiratory system currently. Kathy Moore say, how much will we charge the client for RTM service? Um, we will have similar kind of minimum reading. Okay, that's, that is uh, CMS in the register has not clear whether it is 16 or every day or 30 days. So uh, that is left alone. So I would say um, CMS want people to start doing it and see what they can get. So I don't think there's a restriction uh, it's it's same, same as, as, as they are our remote patient monitoring, we had the 16 reading required for billable uh, monthly event. Okay, Rasachi Reki, Bill, who will be eligible for device? So anybody uh, provider chose to provide remote therapeutic monitor who has Medicare or Medicare replacement plan and uh, will be eligible for the device. Well, Judah, thank you for putting all this together. Our team consists of here. Chesco, you want to say hello to everybody? Okay, Dylan, you want to say hello to everybody? And Judah, hey, where are you? Chris, I'm here. You can, yeah, well, go and show on your, your face and let everybody see you, how hard working you're working, okay? So thank, thank you, you all. We will see if there's any more thing here, question-wise. No, so we will... We will continue to learn from it and we'll come time to time and give you a seminar what we learn uh, about remote therapeutic monitoring. Thank you all.